What's up guys, Alec on Carry here. Today we're gonna go over some recent dip work of mine. And this session is part of the conjugate style work that I've been doing for my upper body calisthenics exercises over these last few months. And in this particular session, the primary variation that I was working on for the dip was the bottoms up weighted dip with the goal here of working up to a heavy single. And this was the second time that I had ever performed this variation. The first time that I did it, I actually surprised myself a little bit and I managed to hit a pretty solid single with an additional 150 pounds. And so here, a few weeks later, I was feeling a little bit more confident after I hit my last ramp up with three plates. And so I decided to load up 160 pounds after that for my top lift of the day. And as you'll see in just a minute here, I managed to grind through that one by the skin of my teeth. It was a, a really tough lift but it was a good fight. And overall, I maintained pretty well throughout the lift. My main issue with it is that I kind of lost control of my legs and they ended up flailing out behind me. And that's not ideal because it causes me to lose my abdominal brace during the lift. Whereas when the legs are pushed out in front of me or at least held straight down and not drifting too far behind me, I can hold the abs tight. And that is very important because it prevents my torso from swinging around too much during the lift. That's something that happens very easily when you have all this weight dangling between your legs. And you can see that on the 160 pound lift, I kind of stopped focusing on that. And, and, and as a consequence of that, my legs pulled up behind me pretty early on in the lift. And then for that whole grind, I'm basically just fighting to hold myself steady and having to, to, to serve and, and find pressing leverage as my torso rocks back and forth during the lift. And that makes things more difficult. It makes it to where you might miss lifts that you shouldn't otherwise miss. And so there's always something that you can be working on in terms of your lifting technique. But overall, I was quite satisfied with this lift. And I think that a worthy goal to shoot for on this exercise in the long run is going to be four plates or 180 pounds, 20 more pounds that I did right here. And that may or may not be feasible. Who the heck knows? All I know is that this is a very, very difficult dip variation. Dropping into the bottom of the dip and then receiving and steadying yourself against all that resistance from the bottom position, the absolute bottom position, the weakest position of the lift, it's really fucking hard. And, and this is a concept that I've started toying around with a lot more lately, not just with these bottoms up dips and that Larson pin press that I just posted as a short yesterday, but also with a few different pause variations on different exercises as well like the like the dip I've been doing pause dips through a max range of motion and ATG squats ATG pause squats as well again also through maximal range of motion and that ends up being quite a different stimulus from these bottoms up versions like what I'm showing you here today and in some ways it's actually quite a bit harder for example when you press from the bottoms up or, or you do a dead stop lift off pins or whatever, there's zero momentum, right? Because you're pressing from the very bottom. There, there's no elastic energy when you're starting the lift off of pins from the bottom position. And you have to receive because of that. You have to receive all of the weight at once and you have to do that in the weakest portion of the lift, the weakest part of the range of motion. And because of that, these lifts, these bottoms up versions, these dead stop versions, they basically end up just being brute force, a dummy strength that allows you to fight through the lift and grind it out. But when you pause in the bottom position for five seconds or even more than that, you are removing most of the elastic energy, not all of it, but most of it. But the major difference is that you're having to support the weight for the entire time in the weakest part of the range of motion. And so that ends up being an interesting difference for me. For example, the, for just, just for example, so far, I've bottoms up dipped a decent bit more weight than what I can pause dip with a five second pause. And I think that a major reason for that is that it's really, really difficult for me to hold on to that bottom position of the dip with all that extra weight on me. And so by the time it comes time to actually press myself back up, I'm almost out of gas. And so 
Like I said, the pause versions and the bottoms up versions, they're both really good, but really good and a different stimulus, but they're quite a bit different from each other. And so I need to work on both of them. And and, and it's really fun stuff. And I, I think that all of these different stimuli that I'm applying, the different movement variations, the dead stop training, the, the pause training, all that good stuff, it's really going to increase my brute strength levels, my brute strength levels, as well as my versatility. And, and overall, it's just going to make me stronger and more well-rounded. And so I'll keep you guys posted on how things progress here over the next few months. Moving on though, as you can see, I went ahead and I did some volume work on the OHP and the Swiss bar row after I finished up my heavy dips. And on these exercises, I'm just putting in quality work, man. I'm trying to build a big back, build some big cannonball shoulders, and I'm just focusing on logging high quality, sub-maximal volume here. I'm rotating through a couple different variations, and I'm slowly increasing the reps and the loads over time. There's not, not too much to note here, though, uh, other than the fact that this stuff always feels, for me, it always feels a lot harder than it looks. It never looks that hard to lift sub-maximal weights, but in some ways, I find this hypertrophy style of training, the moderate to high rep work with moderate loads, to actually be substantially more difficult than a lot of the typical strength training set and rep schemes that I've used over the years and that I often demonstrate on my channel. You know, by the time the third set rolls around here on these exercises, I honestly want nothing to do with it. But you got to man up and you got to gut out the rest of the work. And then I finished up the day here with some loo raises along with band resisted dips. Now, for the loo raise, I'm keeping things a little bit lighter on this exercise at the moment. I had worked up to 25 or even 35 pounds per hand, but right now I've dropped it back down to the 15 pounders and I'm just focusing on accruing a lot of reps, right? A, a lot of high quality reps, high quality work, high quality volume. And so here, for example, I did three sets of 15 reps with the 15 pounders, which was solid overall, but pretty fucking tough, man. My shoulders are burning pretty good here after just a few reps in each set, and every set after that gets harder and harder. After after two of these, there's a hell of a lot of lactic acid just hanging around in the shoulders, and so it's pretty tough to get through this but I managed to do it. Now, with the dips, I'm just looking mostly for some extra triceps emphasis here. I often have a hard time finishing the, the final third of the lift right around the lockout on, on my heavy dips. And so I'm trying really hard to emphasize the triceps a bit more here just to give them a little bit more love and see what happens. Now, it may have a positive impact on my heavy dips or it may not. I really don't know. It, it may just be that the lockout is hard for me on my heavy dips because I lose too much speed out of the bottom of the lift because I have a weak chest. So it could literally be the opposite. I have no idea. It could go either way. And the only way to figure it out is to experiment and just see what works best. So here, I'm just going for three sets of eight to 12 reps per set just to finish things out, knock out my triceps a little, give, give them a little bit more work at the end of the end of the session here. So I'm going for an additional 25 to 30 reps in total just to close the session out. I'm only resting about a minute in between sets here. And so the triceps are, are fatiguing pretty quickly as I do these, and, and they end up being pretty tough. They're, they're actually a lot tougher than they look look it's when when you watch these lockouts on camera against the band they actually don't look all that hard but in real life they felt really hard to me and so anyway i'll keep cycling through this supplemental work for the foreseeable future and we'll see where everything goes you guys can consider me your human guinea pig i'll keep you updated on my progress 
Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And most importantly of all, I hope that you were able to take something useful away from it. Take some ideas away from this to use in your own training. Please remember to smash the like button before you go. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave me some love in the comments down below as well. And if you're interested in online coaching or training programs, be sure to visit my website, www.uncareelitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard and I will catch you guys next time. Oh! <gasps>